Daryl, nice to talk. How are you today, pal? Okay? I'm doing great. Great, Chris. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Good to have you aboard. And I'll tell you, you know, it's things like that that bonded team. You had some things in 86. The Mets are having some things go right for them here in 2022. Love the vibe at City Field. It's sort of expressed on Friday night. Let me hear your thoughts on that. Go ahead. Well, I think it's important, you know, to really be able to bring back the fans and the importance of playing in Queens and understanding what it's like for Mets fans, you know, who have suffered for a long time to uh, bring it, put a team on the field that can compete and be consistent. And so far, so good uh, this start of the season. And, and they just got to continue. You know, it's early in the year and you're going to have some, you know, highs and you're going to have some lows. And just really, can you balance that out? I think that's going to be really the key is being able to balance it out through a, throughout the course of the season. And you knew right away, Davey Johnson said we're going to win it all there in spring training, A.V. 86. You knew right away. I know you lost a couple games early, but you knew right away how good that Met team was as 86 embarked. You were good in 85, and you knew you were going to be the team to beat right off the bat. You went to St. Louis and buried the Cardinals, and you never looked back. Darrell, thoughts on that? Go ahead. Yeah, I, I think the most important thing, we lost in 84 to the Cubs, and then we lost in 85 to the Cardinals. And, and then we realized that after that series in St. Louis, when we lost that, uh, the clubhouse was quiet that year at our last game of the season, and we just realized coming into 86 that we were going to be different. We were going to have a different swagger about ourselves, and you know, we knew teams were going to challenge us, but we were, we were going we made sure that we were going to put it down their throat, that they understood that they were playing with the wrong guys this year. We were a different team, and we wasn't going to be pushed over anymore. And 100% and off you went. We'll get back to that in a sec. You know, you're one of the few. Cone's another one. But you're one of the few who had a lot of success with both franchises. You know, you were an integral part of those Yankee teams, those first crew, first group that won some titles with Torrey. And obviously the Mets, yeah, you're really more of a Met than a Yankee. But you got some success with both. Not many people in New York baseball have that. You do. Cone's another one. Thoughts on that? Let me hear. I, we just had an opportunity. You know, the boss brought me and Coney over, George, and he thought highly of us playing over in Queens. And I don't know, maybe at times he just wanted to be able to stick it to the match and say, you once a lot of time had these guys, but look, I have them now, and they're going to play for me, and they're going to do great things over here. And, you know, it was a fun time. You know, Joe Torrey was a great manager. He just let us be players. He let us play. And, you know, we just kind of bond together as a team. I think baseball is the sport where you have to bond together. It can't be about just one player. If it's about just one player, you're not going to win. That one player can go on and have a good year. That two players can have a good year. But to win, you have to have a complete team. And I think that's what we had with the Yankees. But that's also what we had with our Met days. We had complete teams. You know, everybody played a part in what we was all about. You know, we had a gutty team. We had guys like Wally and Lenny at the top of the order, Tuffle. You know, you had the middle of the order guys that could do some serious damage. And it was just a team effort. I think when you get that out of your whole team, uh, you, you don't look at one particular player to get the job done. You know, Coney came over and he was phenomenal for us in, in those years. And we, we were just a group of guys that love playing the game the right way. And I think so with the Yankee teams. We love playing the game the right way. Uh, do you think the Mets, um, you know, a little bit like the Braves, needed another championship there to seal it? You had a great chance in 88. Obviously, you mentioned 84, 85, 87, you were good too, but 88 was your chance, and the Dodgers beat you. Did the Mets lose an opportunity to seal and to stamp their greatness with not another championship in the 80s? No, I don't think so. I think we established our greatness by the way we played all those years in the 80s. You think about it, Chris. The, the fact is, is they have the wild card today. You know, back then we didn't have the wild card. We won 95 games a year. If there was a wild card, we would be in the playoffs every year, so we would have had more opportunities. You had to win the division to get into the playoffs. So that was always challenging because teams were great each year, and the challenge was going to be who was going to stay healthy. And I think 87, we didn't stay healthy. After the 86, we lost our, our pitching staff. 88 was a great year. You know, the Dodgers just got hot at the right time. A team can get hot. You know, this this year, team for the match are playing great. They got off to a great start. But believe me, other teams are going to pick the pace up. And can you maintain yourself? That's the key to it all, being able to maintain your ability to stay in ball games. And I think for the 88 year, we just dominated that year. And, and the Dodgers got hot at the time. And, and they beat us in that series.
Yeah, he got picked off easily. Could have won Hershiser. Gibson, of course, associate the hormone off good and everything else. So you and I have discussed this before. If you could do it over again, you not you would not have left uh, after the whatever 90 season, 89 season. You would have stayed, right? I mean, in, in essence, Daryl made a mistake. Let me hear your thoughts on that. Go ahead. Yeah, I mean, of course. I mean, New York was home for me. I mean, of course, I wish I could have stayed with the Mets. I wish I, you know, didn't have to leave New York. But I was, you know, my hand was kind of pushed out, you know, that, you know, this is what it's going to be. And, you know, you let a guy get into a free agent year, that's a risky thing to do because he can have a good year like I did and in and, and that last year of my season. And then you walk. It's a free agent year. There's an open door for you. There's going to be multiple teams that, that's going to talk to you and you're going to listen. And somebody's going to make you a good offer. And when that happens, you know, you could lose a guy that's a franchise player. So you take the team, take that risk. You take that risk of getting hurt. But at the same time, if you believe in your ability to stay healthy, which I did, and I stayed healthy and I, I, I took a free agent and I went to the Dodgers and, you know, that that was it. You know, it was it was all over the career that I had with the Mets were done. And I didn't come back to New York until I came back to the Yankees. And Daryl came back to New York in his first game. I believe he hit a home run there at uh, Shea Stadium. That was Frank Cashin's fault. Never should have let Daryl go. You hit a lot of long home runs, Daryl. The one in Montreal, one off the clock. You hit one off uh, Houston once that broke a ball out in left center, right center field. <laughs> I know you hit one against the Phillies in the first thing that basically you hit the team bus in the back of the right field bullpen. Is there one from a distance standpoint that stands out? Let me hear I, I just think so many of so many home runs at Shea Stadium. You know, I just had a field day. I love hitting in that ballpark. Yes, of course, I hit a lot of home runs long ways in different ballparks on the road. But Shea Stadium was home, man. When I could hit a ball off the scoreboard that was just up on the on his way up, I, I could just imagine sometime if it wasn't for that scoreboard where those balls would have been going. But you know, I love playing at home. I love playing in front of Med fans. It, it was just an incredible time. Uh, being in New York and starting my career in New York and being a homegrown kid uh, from the organization and, and being developed and coming through that organization and playing at Shea Stadium. You know, so everybody talks about how Shea Stadium was a dump. Yeah, but it was our dump. You know, we, we love the fact that, you know, the, the fans came there and supported us the way they did. When you get the fans behind you over there in Queens and Met fans behind you, it, it's, it's a tremendous feeling. You know, it's the same thing over in the Bronx. New York fans are great. You know, once you once they believe in you and see that you have an opportunity to be good and, and got a chance to win, they're coming out to the ballpark. You know, fans are not going to come out to the ballpark if you if you play half baseball. They want to see you play Baseball. They want to see you be right. tough. They don't want to see you be soft. They want to see you be real. 100%. Uh, fans will respond if the team's got some charm to it and works hard. Mets, this team might very well have that. Daryl, great to talk. Keep in touch. Thanks for coming on here today. Always appreciate it.